Welcome back, uh, everyone, to the State of the Nation in Geneva, Switzerland. While the terror lovers gather trying to put Sri Lanka through the gutter, after 13 years, something amazing happened. It is a matter of deep satisfaction to us that the Sri Lanka government's position was endorsed by 31 out of the 45 countries that participated in the interactive dialogue on Sri Lanka. That is a very considerable triumph. Now, finally, member nations of the UNHRC are waking up to the cock and bull story, masterfully elaborated and illustrated by LTT terror sympathizer Michelle Bashley also known as the UNHRC High Commissioner. Now, the member nations were not having it. They had enough that this corrupt High Commissioner, after feasting herself with LTT propaganda funds, were coming after a sovereign nation that led a humanitarian operation to save its own people from what was known as the most ruthless terrorist organization in the world, the LTTE. Listen to this speech uh, by the Belarusian delegate who made this statement at the UNHRC session that explains the bull by the UNHRC. OHCHR is being made to look like an externally controlled investigation. The information provided by OHCHR for this session on Sri Lanka and Belarus is a clear example of the implementation of this concept. In this connection, we stress that we do not believe a single word by OHCHR and call on it to return to its mandate as defined in UNGA Resolution 48-141 and strictly observe the principle of neutrality in its activities. We have to discuss the situation of Sri Lanka and this should not be on the agenda of the Human Rights Council at all. We commend the government of Sri Lanka for its success in post-war reconstruction and reconciliation and for further improving the standards of living of its people. We call on the Council to engage in mutually respectful dialogue with Sri Lanka and reject politically motivated decisions. Well, we need to understand uh, the end game of organizations like the UNHRC. If you look at the budgets of the UNHRC and the UN, you will see it runs into billions of dollars. Billions. I think last year it was around $27 billion to the UN. Now ask yourself, what the heck do they do with that money? Do a little bit of research, you will find that most of this money is utilized to maintain staff, do useless time consuming, unproductive meetings, travel, take care of their staff's well-being, all that la-di-da expenditure. What goes to the real people who need assistance? Chip change. Of course, they put media statements after statements saying, we provided $1 million for the vaccination program in Sri Lanka. They didn't, I'm just taking as an example. So $1 million for this activity. Now that's a lot of money. And we think, oh my God, they really do help. But what we need to look at is what's the percentage of funds you actually give back to the welfare of the people to ensure their well-being? One million dollars out of, out, out of an exuberant budget of over a billion dollars is nothing. It's like if I suddenly become a billionaire today, I will go to the temple and give a donation of 100,000 rupees just for me to feel good about myself. That doesn't mean that I gave away everything I have or at least a majority of what I have. You also need to understand about this woman called Michelle Bachelet. She is currently the High Commissioner of the UNHRC, but before that she was the President of the Republic of Chile. When Michelle Bachelet left office, she had some of the lowest domestic approval ratings, around 26%, according to Al Jazeera. This was primarily due to the government being leveled with corruption charges, including her own family. But her son was accused of using political influence on banks in that country. Her own son, Sebastian Davalos Bashle, had to resign as the head of the government's charity after he was accused of using his influence to get a large bank loan for his wife. Now, during her tenure as the president, the indigenous community of Chile, known as the Mapuche people, had been persecuted under her government, for which she later apologized at the end of her tenure. The Associated Press reported that the government of President Michel Bachelet is persecuting Mapuche activists with secret evidence, persecuted witnesses and other tough aspects of an anti-terrorism law. Yeah, 
she's the one to talk about human rights. Joining me now is Justice Minister Ali Sabri. He was part of Sri Lanka's delegation to the 49th session of the UNHRC. Minister, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Now, sir, we can call the events that occurred at the session a massive victory for Sri Lanka. A majority of the countries at the UNHRC stood against the High Commissioner's, uh, for the Commissioner and her report. And uh, that was that the exact message you also got from your face-to-face -face interactions with other delegates? Uh, de definitely. We have had a very good uh, discussion and cordial um, relationship with most of the delegations, Mahesh. And we managed to convince them. And out of 45 countries, 31 countries spoke in favor of our resolution and the manner in which we have responded. And they all told the same thing that we wanted, that Sri Lanka need time and space and a do domestic mechanism in order to come out of this uh, whatever the issues we have. Indeed. Uh, Minister, now, during this whole UNHRC session, uh, especially from the High Commissioner, despite commending, uh, you know, fake commendations uh, about specific steps taken by Sri Lanka on human rights front, she criticised the judicial system and mentioned that apparently there is no trust in the processes we have initiated here. How do you respond uh, to that? I can't. Uh, I, I just uh, don't agree with it. Uh, basically, we have a very independent judiciary. If you, you know, uh, Mahesh, last uh, few weeks or few months, there are several judgments against the government too that shows the independence of the judiciary. We know how uh, bold is our Human Rights Commission itself. They are very categorically told, for example, um, to remove the PTA. So therefore, we have a credible uh, mechanism within the country. We also have OMP, we also have OR, we also have ONUR, which were just institution during the last government. And most of the time it was confined to a, a name board, but we have done a lot of work there. We have in fact visited and had mobile services in, uh, in those areas. So therefore a lot of work had been done to someone to say and just categorically disregard all what we have achieved over a period of time, which most of the Western partners too were, is sometimes disappointing. Indeed, uh, the hypocrisy of the UNHRC is very evident. Minister, where do we go from here? What is the next step? Are we going to forget about uh, this uh, and you know come back uh, next year and revisit the whole thing? Or are we taking uh, steps to erase the unpleasant, uh, biased, bogus attempts by the UNHRC to discredit Sri Lanka and our military's humanitarian operation? No, we will continue to work with them. Uh, human rights and the international relationship and diplomacy is a complex uh, issue. Uh, we cannot antagonize anyone. We need more friends. Our policy is non aligned. We are friends of all and no enemy to anyone. So therefore, it's important that we continue to engage, educate them. Uh, unfortunately, there are some people who are hell-bent on um, capitalizing on the differences uh, amongst the communities. What we are focusing on is to build on the trust which we have built over a period of time and slowly move on towards that. For example, this morning, I just had a discussion with Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs to finalize the amendments to the PTA. We are not just resting. We are just two days after the um, UNHCR's um, sessions. So the amendment to the PTA will be uh, debated on the 22nd of this month. And similarly, last week, Cabinet, after the UNHRC sessions, appointed one, uh, the approved one of my um, proposal to appoint 25 panels to inquire into the complaints of those who have been um, missing or their loved ones have complained. So therefore, we have, a f we have a lot of focus on that. That's why we were able to go before our friends and tell them and brief them. And that's how they all spoke in our favor. So I think if we work very carefully, uh, without creating unnecessary uh, issues here in Sri Lanka. If you go through the uh, UNHRC report itself, some of those things could have been avoided. So we, it is important that we don't mis uh, repeat the mistake. We work uh, on what we have started. We build trust and we put people to people contact uh, between North and South and build that credibility where all Sri Lankans in this country, irrespective of their race, religion or culture, and language could live with dignity and respect. Well, Minister of Justice Ali Sabri, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it.
Now, while Sri Lanka was making headway and actually doing an excellent job convincing the world that it's all bogus accusations being leveled uh, at Sri Lanka, two clowns and a clergy head to the terror lover's capital and speaks against their motherland. To speak to you, to seek your help, Sri Lanka journey of impunity needs to stop. The, its journey of silencing and imprisoning honest people like my friend Ranjan Ramanayaka, who has been in prison for four years for demanding justice and calling out corruption, needs to stop. As this is a case of a serious violation of the fundamental rights of the aggrieved victims, we earnestly call upon the UNHRC and all its member countries to support the continuation of evidence gathering initiated by the Council last year and to devise a means to ensure an impartial investigation to unravel the truth behind the Easter Sunday massacre. <laughs> ඒගොල්ලෝ අපිට ඇවිල්ලා අපි මොනවද කරන්න ඕනේ කියලා යෝජනා කරලා ඒක කරන්න අපිට තල්ලු කරන එක ඒක සුදුසු නැහැ. I will not waste my time talking about those two clowns Harin Fernando and uh, Manusha Narakar from the SJB on their idiotic action. After all, if you are part of the SJB then it's expected they display this low quality of behavior because that is the default quality you need in order to be part of the SJB also stands for spreading gibberish bull. However, as a Christian, I have something to say about the action of our beloved leader of the Catholic Church. As a leader of the Catholic Church, there's no other way you can act but as the way of Christ. Therefore, at any given point in that person's life, he has to uphold the teachings of Christ, no matter what the earthly circumstances may be. For a simple example, let's take Jesus Christ himself. The good book teaches us uh, that the utmost important teaching of Jesus was love. In Matthew chapter 22, verses um, 36 to 40, we read that when a person raised the question as to what's the greatest commandment of them all, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And this is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like, love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws and prophets hang on to these two commandments. Now when Jesus mentioned this, his circumstances was very ordinary. He was not being prosecuted, not being accused or was on trial. However, when that circumstance changed, like when, he, when the Jews accused him, tortured him, and in the end crucified him, did he change his teachings? Did Jesus Christ change his word? No. If you read Luke chapter 23, 34, it clearly says that while he was on hanging on the cross, he pleads to God, saying, Father, forgive them as they do not know what they do. Right throughout his actions were exactly what he preached, love, forgiveness, and care for humanity. Oh, Mahesh, that's Jesus Christ. Surely you can't expect a human being to act like that. Well, I'm sorry I can, because that's what we expect from the leader of the Catholic Church. I mean, look at uh, Pope John Paul II. On 13th May 1981, at St. Peter's Square in Vatican City, Pope John Paul II was shot and wounded by a gunman called Mehmet Ali Agha while he was entering the square when the Pope was going for a service. The Pope was shot four times, lost a lot of blood, came on the verge of death. Following the shooting, Pope John Paul II asked people while Bullets were in his body. Pray for my brother, Akka, whom I have sincerely forgiven. He didn't stop there. In 1983, he and Akka met uh, and spoke privately at Rome's prison. 
The shooter, Akka, reportedly kissed the Pope's ring after their visit. The Pope was also in touch with Akka's family over the years, meeting his mother in 1987 and his brother, and he forgave just like what Christ did. That's the action of the leader of a Catholic church in the world. It's utterly heartbreaking the way our leader of the Catholic Church here in Sri Lanka behaves. Like you saw earlier on, the very organization he criticized and ridiculed, he's now going and pleading them to come back and attack our country. Why? Because for him, when the circumstances change, he chooses to act in a manner that's unchrist-like. You can fight for the victims in a better way. You don't have to fight for the, for the victims and in the process create another million more victims because of your actions. I hope the leader of the, uh, um, I hope the, I sincerely hope the leader of the Sri Lanka's Catholic Church will remember Christ on his quest to get justice. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not asking the leader of the Catholic Church in Sri Lanka to forgive the perpetrators of the Easter Sunday massacre that took uh, innocent lives of our brothers and sisters. Instead, fight hard, fight strong, but fight Christ-like. Quello che ha fatto le cose più brutte nella vita ha possibilità di essere perdonato? Sì, sì. Nessuno è escluso dal perdono di Dio, soltanto che si avvicini a Gesù, pentito e con la voglia di essere abbracciato. We'll be right back.